What's going on everybody? This is Sean of Ross Life Music and originally I was thinking of doing a review of the Stark Reality Discovers the Haji Carmichael's Music Shop record that I've been listening to pretty much on repeat since I've recorded it. But I'm going to give it one more week. I just really want to get my thoughts and opinions on this as solid as possible. So I'm not churning out like a mediocre review of a record that I am absolutely in love with. So instead of doing that today, uh, I thought I'd do everybody's favorite thing on this channel. Talk about some of the records that I bought recently. I picked up some stuff, uh, some records that uh, I think are worth checking out. And I thought I'd share some of them with you today. So without further ado, let's get into these guys. So first off, I thought I'd talk about the 45s that I picked up recently. One of them is the Jimmy Smith uh, 45 that's, I think, Japan only, and it's got Why Can't We Live Together, but the main reason I picked it up was for the cover of uh, the classic Barry White song. I have to look at it. Uh, I'm Gonna Love You Just a Little More Baby, which the song... In and of itself, the original already has a pretty awesome drum break on it, but this has got an even better drum break on it. Plus it's jazzy and it's funky, and I'm just sort of into stuff like that. Then the other 45 that I picked up recently, the Silvers, which is another he uh, another great 45, because it's got We Can Make It If We Try, which is just a, a nice, sweet, kid soul kind of track similar to the Jackson 5. But the main attraction on this one is Only One Can Win. Yeah, Only One Can Win. Which is the iconic sample from uh, Jay Dilla's Two Can Win off of his Donuts am album. So if you've ever wondered where that sample came from, it comes from this guy right here. Uh, the Silver stuff I've wanted for ages. I've been looking for Silver's 1 and 2 for a while. And while I don't have those records in my collection yet, I'm very glad to have this on 45. And this guy too. Which I didn't really know about until I picked it up, but now that I do have it, I'm very happy to have it in my collection. Next up into LPs, I finally got around to picking up a record that everybody was raving about back in 2016. And that's Yusef Kamal's Black Focus. And it's just a really good modern jazz record. Uh, they're mostly a keyboard and drums duo. And I gotta say, I'm actually liking this record a lot more than I thought. I've been burned by a lot of sort of modern jazz records recently. The Black Milk record, record that came out, I think maybe the same year as this one wasn't all that interesting, and I was not a huge fan of the Robert Glasper's uh, Miles Ahead album, which didn't, just really didn't do anything for me. However, as far as the modern jazz records that I've heard recently, this is the best one that I've heard, and if you like sort of a mix of jazz with uh, sort of some electronic elements to it, and if you like your music mellow like I do, yeah, this is definitely a record worth uh, checking out. And I'm very happy to finally have picked it up and that it didn't disappoint me in the slightest. So the last three records that I picked up recently are all instrumental hip-hop records. I don't really know exactly how the music sounds on these records, but based on either the artist or the label that they put their record out on, Pretty much guaranteed that the record's going to be, at the very least, good, but possibly excellent. And the first one of those records is 14KT's Now Latas, which is apparently an unreleased project that 14KT uh, was working on shortly after uh, Dilla passed in 2006. 14KT, still uh, one of my favorite beat makers right now. And I uh, guarantee there's going to be some really good drums on this, some great sample chopping. And yeah, I'm just happy to have this in my collection. Then moving on from that, we've got my very first Exile record. I've been curious about Exile for a long time, but for whatever reason, not never got into any of his stuff with Blue. And I don't really know about who else he's made beats for. But when I saw that he put out a record on Fat Beats Baker's Dozen series, 
I figured, uh, let me check it out. Uh, I know a friend of mine is a huge fan of Exile, so I'm sort of happy to finally be jumping on the Exile train, and I'm really looking forward to giving this a listen, because I guarantee there's going to be some really good instrumentals on that. And then the last record is this guy right here, The Gift Volume 5, How Shoes and Street Corner Music Presents T. White, or The Music of T. White, and I don't really know uh, anything about T. White at all, but it is a Street Corner music release, and I'm happy to add another Street Corner music record to my collection, and I guarantee there's going to be some really good beats on here, so... Looking forward to checking this one out. So that's going to be it for me today. Thanks, as always, for watching. Make sure you head over to my Steemit or WordPress blog because that's where I put all the music links for any of the records that I talk about in a review or a recent record pickup. So if you, any of the records that I talk about sounded interesting to you, you can listen to them for yourself over there. And then also I want to point out that I just finished my most recent Raw Select Radio. This is episode number two. You can head over to my Mixcloud or D Sound, which is Steemit's own SoundCloud knockoff, but you should be able to download the mix from there if you don't want to just stream it. Uh, the links for those will also be in the description, and if you just sort of want an audio version of what I'm already doing on this channel, and you just want to hear some good tunes, yeah, head over there and check that out. Let me know what you think of it. That's going to be it for me today. Thanks again. I know I already said that. Hopefully the next review will be a, the, a review for the Stark Reality record. So until then, I want to say, uh, yeah, peace out. See you next time.